STEM scholars. I'm Dr. Christopher, and today I am so excited to talk to you about soils and their chemical properties. Now, soils are all around us. They are used to hold up our buildings. We play on soil, we uh, walk on soil. However, one of the most important reasons that we have soil or that we need soil is to grow our food. And so today we're gonna to be testing soils for some of those chemical properties that are important to food and growing agriculture. So many of you already know that I am an agricultural engineer and my specialty is soil and water. So I'm really excited to share with you some things today because these are the things that I got to do when I was a soil, when I did my soil science, but also because I still use some of these things to test the soils in my garden. Now this first activity that we're going to do today, you do not have the supplies in your kit for this one. We're gonna be using some cabbage and some water uh, to make cabbage juice. If you want to try to do this experiment on your own, uh, I would recommend that you wear something that is dark colored because cabbage juice uh, stains clothes pretty bad. But before we get started, since we're gonna use some chemicals today, I'm gonna to put on safety glasses. So be sure to put on your safety goggles before you do today's activities. Now, to make our cabbage juice, it's pretty simple. Ooh, sorry. I'm just gonna add some water to a blender, along with some purple cabbage leaves. Okay, so after it's blended, I'm gonna just separate the cabbage juice from the solids with a sieve. Okay, okay so I'm gonna take some of this cabbage juice and just pour it in this cup. Now, I'm going to take some vinegar and I'm gonna add it to the cabbage juice. You see the change in color that happened with adding the vinegar to the cabbage juice? Well, why did it change? Well, first of all, one of the reasons that it changed is because cabbage juice is what we call in science an indicator. An indicator is just a chemical that changes color when it is in the presence of another chemical. And in this case, vinegar that we added is an acid. Acids are in things like lemon juice or, um, you know, like, so if you, got lemon juice in your eye, it would sting because of the acid. If you drink Coca-Cola, there's acid in there. And so when you first sip the Coca-Cola, it might actually burn your throat a little bit. So when the acid gets in contact with the cabbage juice, it turns like a pink color. It goes from purple, which is what its original color is, to pink. So, but there's one other thing that cabbage juice can do. Now I'm gonna add some ammonia. Now it went from pink back to purple, even to like this blue green color. Now ammonia is a base. A base is the opposite of an acid. Examples of bases are usually cleaning products, things like soaps, uh, baking soda is a base. In the presence of a base, cabbage juice turns this blue color. So that's how indicators are often used in science to uh, indicate the presence of another chemical. So now we're gonna do the soil testing. Okay, so for our soil test, you're gonna use a lot of things that come into your, in your soil kit. First, you're gonna have a little shovel that you're gonna use to take a soil sample. And what we're gonna be testing the soil for today 
We're gonna be testing it for pH or acidity, just like the indicator for the cabbage, that the cabbage juice was. But we're also gonna be testing for nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Those are all nutrients that plants need to grow. The first thing you need to do is take your soil sample. I got this soil sample from my garden. You just take the baggie, take your um, shovel. When you take your soil sample, be sure to get a little bit underneath the grass and the roots from um, any plants. You want to probably scrape about an inch of soil away before you take your sample so that it's mostly just dirt. Now, if you get some rocks or big clumps of clay in there, because that is what I found in mine, be sure to take the lumps of clay out um, and the rocks out before you do your experiment. Everything in this soil kit is color coded. So for example, the green capsules are indicators for the acidity or pH. The purple indicators are for the nitrogen. The blue is for phosphorus and the orange is for potassium. When you open up your STEM kit, you will get these little capsules. In addition, there are little test tubes, I guess you could call them, and they have colors on the caps and that will tell you how to measure each one. So when you take your sample, um, we're gonna test the pH separately from the, from the nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. To measure these, what you're going to have to do is get this, there's a little jar, plastic jar, that is gonna come in your soil, in your stem kit, and you're going to use the scooper that comes with it to take one scoop of your soil, gonna put that in there, and then you're gonna add five scoops of water. Just regular tap water is fine. You're gonna put five scoops of water in there, and then what you're gonna get is something like this, but first you're gonna shake it up. Be sure to shake it up really well, maybe even for as long as a minute to make sure that the particles um, in the water mix really, really well. Now, then you have to let the soil settle out of the water. And so actually I have left this overnight, so it has been settling for quite a while, but you need to at least let it settle for 30 minutes, maybe longer, depending on the type of soil you have. The more clay you have, the longer it will have to settle. So I let mine sit overnight, and that's how I got this result. All of these will have a similar methodology for the test. The test tube has some little lines on it, and you are going to use the dropper that comes in, this, in your soil test kit, and you are going to fill it up to the fourth line with water. Be sure not to put your dropper down into the soil. Try to get um, the water just from the top. You're gonna just keep squeezing and transferring from, from your original jar to the test tube until you're all the way that line, okay. Then you're going to get your capsule and I'm gonna use some scissors. Now the instructions say that you can um, somehow, you can, you know, take these apart with your hand. Uh, I think I prefer to just cut the, the capsule at one end it makes it a little bit easier for me to pour. There's some powder inside of here that you're trying to pour out. This is the indicator. You're going to pour it into the test tube like that. You're gonna put the top on it and you're just gonna shake it really well. Now it's gonna take some time for the color to develop in each one of these. So I'm gonna repeat the process that I same one I did for the nitrogen. I'm going to do next for the phosphorus and then the potassium. Now you might be asked or wondering, okay, well, why are we testing for all of these chemicals? 
The reason we're testing them is because different plants need different amounts of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So you might get a plant that is not doing very well in a certain area, and maybe it's because of the soil. You can test the soil, and if it's low in something that that plant needs, then you can give it some more of that. So there might be a fertilizer with nitrogen and phosphorus in it that you can add. So I'm just gonna repeat this process, the same one that I did for the nitrogen for these other two. All right, so when it's time to do the acid test, the pH test, and you're finished with the other ones, the acid test is a little bit different. You're going to take the same size of test tube, but this time you're going to add the soil directly to the test tube. And you're going to add it to the, the first line. There's a, there's a line, um, the very first line on the test tube. Then you are going to add your your indicator that is in this capsule. And then again, you're gonna use your dropper to add just plain water into this um, test tube. When you add your water, you're gonna add it, you're gonna fill it to the fourth line, just like the other ones. shake it really well. Now it might take a little while because again, the soil is going to have to settle from this one. So you might wanna set these aside for, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes and make sure everyone gets a chance to settle and get their color. Okay, so after 10 minutes, you're going to use the instruction manual that comes with your test kit to compare the color of your test to the colors that are down here for the various uh, plant, the plant food chart. You're gonna do the same thing with the pH. So for example, you look at the color of uh, the indicator in this pH that is measuring acid, and then you're gonna compare it to the different colors here and you might say, hmm, this looks like, looks closest to this one, which is a pH of 6.55, which means it's slightly acidic. So that's gonna be how you measure your soil chemistry. Now you're gonna use what you've learned from this to do a challenge all by yourself. In this challenge, you're going to have a hypothetical or a fictitious community that has experienced some type of oil spill or some type of contamination that is highly acidic. And this is a map of the community. And what you're gonna pretend is that you took five soil samples from the various spots in this community. And we have the soil samples that are in your STEM kit. 
They're, they're labeled one, two, three, four, and five. What you're gonna do is you are going to repeat this soils test. You're gonna clean out the um, test tube and complete the soil test for all five of these uh, soil samples. When you do, I want you to use the knowledge that you've learned today to try to find out where on this map, which sample is the site where the pollution was first um, dumped. So if you have sites one, two, three, four, five, you're going to decide which one of those sites is the site that the soil sample came from where the contamination first started. The reason that we're measuring this is if a soil is contaminated, there's water that's under the ground, and if that water, when it rains, goes through the pollution and, the, and that pollution gets into the groundwater, the groundwater then feeds our lakes and rivers, and so that means pollution can affect um, the plants and animals that are in our lakes and rivers, and we don't want that. So we have to be able to find the source of contaminants as scientists and engineers um, to keep our water quality high in our lakes and streams. Well, that's all for today. I am so glad that you uh, took this challenge with me. I hope you learned something and I hope you have fun. I really miss you and I can't wait to see you again. Goodbye.